Hello, my name is Theodore Parker and this is The Sideshow. Today is Thursday, October 20th, 2022. Well, let me say this off the bat. Now that, like I said before, the days are shorter, the sun is coming up a little bit later and going down a little bit earlier, that kind of precludes that... Um, Reflex of getting up before the sun comes up and starting the day, and especially like last night, okay? Temperatures went down around here in Kentucky in this area down to about 32 degrees. And as if that wasn't enough, overnight it went down to 30. And even after the sun came up this morning for a large portion of it until recently, it was still at 30. Now, presently, I just checked this at 43 degrees, but officially fall. Yo. So, that kind of started my early morning activities. I'm getting ready to do the side show, etc., etc. So I have a few items to share with you this today. And starting out with this one from the Philippines. Um, the months of October through December are earthquake months, and they recently experienced early this week an earthquake, 5.5 on the Richter scale which is enough to make the house shake. So schools are closed, waiting for the active aftershock to pass by. School exams start next week for those people in the Philippines and school-aged children. So as far as I can tell, there were no injuries and no deaths reported. So we can be thankful for that much for them, keeping them in our prayers. Jumping across to the UK, UK Prime Minister Liz Truce resigns after six weeks in office. Her announcement on Thursday came on her 45th day in office. She was to become the shortest serving prime minister in her country's history if she leaves office before she hits 119 days. She was replaced um, board and he just had a tumultuous situation come up because of parties, I believe, that were going on during the holidays, which were not supposed to be done because of COVID-19 quarantines, et cetera, et cetera. And not offering excuses for the man, but I think it was around that time that he was told that he was, they were gonna be expecting another child, which I think by this time probably has been born. So anyway, let's continue with UK Prime Minister Liz Truss' situation. A string of Tory MPs, and I don't really understand the references in English politics, but I'll just give it to you because the details notwithstanding are all present. That's a contradiction in terms, I guess, but applicable. A string of Tory MPs publicly urged Truce to resign on Thursday, with many of them describing her government as unsustainable. We do know from the stock market here in this country that English, England's money has dropped in value somewhat. So, continuing. But since her victory, her time in office was marked by controversy. Even her the least popular conservative prime minister in history and her party's polling numbers plummeting. Her many budget last month spooked the markets prompted a plummeting British pound and forced her to replace her finance minister who reversed almost the entire package of economic measures. 
So there you have the British government referencing the prime minister position at this time. Coming back to the shores of the United States inside this country, a quote from former Vice President Pence, there might be someone else I prefer more. Pence suggests he might not back Trump in 2024. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this deal, you know, baffles me somewhat that I just went over maybe a couple of months ago articles or references from the Constitution that says based on Trump's former position in office that he would not be allowed to run again for the office of president. But yet his name keeps coming up in reference to the 2024 elections. So I'm a little bit baffled as to the proper references, constitutional reference to what's going on and how it's being addressed. But anyway, let us continue. Pence had a falling out with the former president after a pro-Trump mob attacked the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Trump had repeatedly criticized Pence for refusing to use his ceremonial role in presiding over the electoral count to overturn Joe Biden's 2020 win. Fired up by Trump's antics, Rioters chanted, hang Mike Pence, as they rampaged through the Capitol wielding flagpoles and other weapons. Pence and congressional leaders had to be whisked to safety before resuming the certification once the building was secured. Now see, this right here was when, well, you recently saw film and video of what was going on released in this most recent meeting of the January 6th committee. Because some of the names that came out when this initially happened on the 6th was like uh, Alexandria Ocasio Ortiz or A -O -A -O -C. AOC, excuse me. She was hiding in her office and felt thoroughly threatened. McDonald's wife, Chow, which I think is spelled C H Cho, C H O, was a part of Trump's administration at the time, was thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly felt threatened in her position. Because she resigned, which was why when Trump was standing next to the man talking about death threats and mispronouncing his wife's name and, you know, the way it was translated by the media as far as the spelling was changed on and different things like that. You know, this is a lot of boldness to me. And then for him to have people running around talking about hanging pants and we definitely want to hang some people out today and things of this nature and then turn back around and expect support to stand next to, physically stand next to somebody like that after you have, you know, threatened their lives and ran over their place of work and, and feeling confidence just gone. So not only the ones that I mentioned, AOC stayed, but child, she did resign along with a few others. So it was, you know, to put it mildly, a very traumatic moment. So for Pence to decide not to back that, you know, he put it kind of, I don't think that would be my choice. <laughs> I don't see any reason why you should have to, you know? So anyway, that's my input on that, which is why it keeps amazing me that, that he just keeps he, meaning Trump, keeps coming up with, you know, would otherwise be construed as threats to people who are in opposition to his ideas and the way he makes his comments. 
Okay, next thing. Secret files suggest chemical giant feared weed killers linked to Parkinson's disease. So if you're watching TV or the internet or anything, you got like two things that's constantly coming across right now. You got the Marines with Camp Lejeune and their lawsuit. If you were stationed at Camp Lejeune during this time and that time, excuse me, and you got this Parkinson's thing that's coming along right with it. So this article has to do with the Parkinson's thing. So it says, secret files suggest chemical giant feared weed killers linked to Parkinson's disease. For decades, which I didn't know, Swiss chemical giant Sagenta has manufactured and marketed a widely used weed killing chemical called Paraguay. And for much of that time, the company has been dealing with external concerns that long-term exposure to the chemical may be a cause of the incurable brain ailment known as Parkinson's disease. So I've been, you know, knowing about Parkinson's for years. You know, famous actors and celebrities have, in some instances, succumbed and announced that they are suffering with it, and so forth and so on. So it's not unknown but I didn't know that it was a Swiss company that were the manufacturers of it. In one defensive tactic, the documents indicate that the company worked beyond the scenes to try to keep a highly regarded scientist from sitting on an advisory panel for the U.S. Environmental Protective Agency. And that's swinging a lot of moolah. That's swinging a lot of moolah. Even keep track of what's going on, who is where doing what. The agency is the chief U.S. regulator for Paraguay and other pesticides. Company officials wanted to make sure the efforts could not be traced back to Sagenta, the documents show. The documents show that insiders feared they could face legal liability for long-term chronic effects of Paraguay as long ago as 1975. Among the revelations from document scientists with Sagenta predecessor Imperial Chemical Industries and Chevron Chemical, Chevron Gas, were aware in the 1960s and 70s of mounting evidence showing Paraguay could accumulate in the human brain. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got 30 up to 2000 and then other 20, that's 50 years of Paraguay on the market doing what it do or what it does. Next quote, with all that being said, Paraguay in the news, what well, we used to call class action suit, I don't know what they want to call it now, the same thing, giant corporations doing things to affect the environment and people so the next one is a quote, it is highly unethical for a company not to reveal data they have that could indicate that their product is more toxic than had been believed, said Bruce Bloomberg, professor of developmental and cell biology at the University of California, Irvine, speaking generally about corporate conduct. These companies are trying to maximize products, profits, and they jeopardize public health, and it shouldn't be allowed. That is the scandal. So there you have it. To take on it, not professing a holier-than-thou attitude, of course, but profits above safety. I think there's always going to be somebody watching out for that maneuver. And the one that I'm going to leave you with today is about people are realizing what the M&M's on M&M's actually stands for. M&M's candy melts in your mouth, not in your hand. This is a cute little story, excuse the expression, about this because... You know, I'm from Pennsylvania, I'm a Hershey guy, 
and all the rest of that stuff. So the famous crispy chocolate candies were invented in New Jersey in 1941. And due to its everlasting impact, 80 years later, you still purchase them as you can still purchase them at your supermarkets today. Now, the story behind it is this. That the first M, who happened to be Mars, yes, Mars candy, all the other stuff, the little bars and stuff, him, was involved in the Spanish War, which took place in the 30s. So while he was there, he noticed the British soldiers, because of, you know, chocolate and stuff being a war ration, those the can they had had a hard shell and didn't melt. So in the 40s, he took came back, you know, to America in the 40s, approached William Murray, whose father was Murray and the Hershey Chocolate Executive, about the idea of creating the candy with the hard shell which initially they were sold only to the U.S. military. So deployed soldiers overseas could eat them and not worry about them melting. Not long after the product was launched in stores, it remains to be popular sweet option today. So the M&M stands for Mars and Murray. According to the Daily Mail, the chocolate brand title comes from the names of the two founders, Forrest E. Mars Sr., who also introduced Milky Way and Mars, Inc., and Bruce Murray, the son of Hershey executive William Murray. M&M's. Notes in your mouth, not in your hand. So that's a few stories for today, Thursday, October 20th, 2022. I'm Theodore Parker. This is a sideshow. That's it. Hashtag.